When using VST and VSTi plugins, it's important to set up the path to your VST plugin folder. In order to do this, press Y on the keyboard to open the system options. Then go down to the effects tab and select VST DirectX Rewire. And where it says VST plugin path, click on the folder icon and select browse VST folder. Now you need to navigate to where your VST plugins are installed. In my case, it's under Program Files, Magic's Samplitude 10 Pro, VST Plugins. Then press OK to close the system options. So the path will be defined now. Incidentally, you may find that when opening a plugin for the first time after setting the VST folder path, there may be a slight delay. This is because Samplitude is scanning the folder and making a database of which plugins are installed. There are a few other settings worth checking before you start using VSTIs. Press Y again on the keyboard. Under Audio System, make sure you have ACO selected. You must have ACO drivers installed in order to use VST plugins. Without ACO, you won't be able to use VST plugins. Then select from the drop-down list the particular driver you want to use for your sound card. In my case, I'm using Magic's Low Latency 2008. Also, check your ACO buffer. If you have anything over 512, you'll find there'll be an unacceptable delay when you play the VSTi. You can, of course, set the ACO buffer a lot lower depending on your needs. But this will also depend on what sound card you are using as to how low you can set the latency. This can be done by opening the control panel and making the necessary adjustments. The look of the control panel will vary depending on the sound card manufacturer, although you can use ACO for all, which is a generic control panel. I happen to be using the built-in sound card of my computer, but that's purely for technical reasons whilst I'm making this tutorial video. For voice narration input, I'm using a Firewire audio file. For your monitoring setup, I suggest you keep the fader all the way to the right and use Mixer FX Monitoring Hybrid Engine. This is recommended. And also, under Monitoring Behavior, I suggest you tick the Mix Input and Playback box. Under Audio Devices, make sure you have the correct sound card input selected, although the chances are you've made these settings already. Also, the same with the playback devices, although I can disable the last three on my sound card, as I'm not planning on doing any surround mixing at this time. Next thing is to click on the MIDI tab. This is very important. You must have the correct MIDI input selected for your global record device and also the same with the MIDI output. I suggest you untick Microsoft GS Wavetable Software Synth and deselect that from the global play device. This will stop you hearing strange piano sounds in the background when you're trying to play your VSTi. This has been known to happen sometimes. And also, I suggest you change the sync velocity to 100%. That's the last of the settings I need to make, so I'll close the dialog box. Now press the MIDI button here so it turns blue. That will prepare the track for MIDI recording. And you will notice that the speaker icon is highlighted at the same time. This will allow you to hear the VSTi as you play it. There are several ways to open a plugin. You can do it here from the drop down list, or you can do it here from the plugin menu in the track editor. You can also open plugins from within the mixer. Incidentally, if you left click in the top left hand corner of the mixer, you can open different mixer skins. That's the multi track mixer. Also the recording mixer, nice long faders. That one's from Samplitude 8, Star Grey, and finally the default mixer. It's also possible to purchase third-party skins from other developers. One of my favourites is the Alloy Skin Suite from Orange Hill Audio, and also Birdline make a range as well. By the way, I made a keyboard shortcut for opening and closing the mixer, which speeds things up somewhat. Anyway, I'm finally going to open a plugin from the plugin slot in the track editor. So that seems to be working okay. If you've followed the steps I've shown you, there's no reason why you shouldn't be getting sound out of your virtual instruments now. If by chance you're not getting any sound, it's worth checking out a couple of these things. Make sure that the speaker icon is enabled here. 
make sure you have monitoring turned on here and also check that the MIDI out is routed to the correct plugin. This is indicated by the red plugin slot. Finally, I would like to cover the two different methods for arming and recording with MIDI tracks. The first one is called automatic MIDI monitoring through. This means when you click on the record button of a MIDI track that monitoring is enabled as well. Notice that the speaker icon has engaged. You can do this on multiple MIDI tracks. A good use for this is if you wanted to layer the sound of two virtual instruments. Now I'm playing the organ and the piano both at the same time but on separate MIDI tracks. And of course you can record both of these instruments simultaneously. Another reason for multiple track arming would be if you wanted to record multiple inputs on separate tracks. Maybe you have a drummer with a MIDI kit, a MIDI guitarist and a keyboard player. Then you can enable separate MIDI inputs for those although it would be necessary to reassign separate MIDI input channels for this to work correctly. Also, the settings would depend on whether you're triggering an internal sound source, like a VSTi for instance, or maybe you're sending the MIDI out to an external sound module and triggering it that way. So these are all valid reasons for using the automatic MIDI monitoring through option in Samplitude. The other MIDI record option, which is new in Samplitude 10, is called Automatic MIDI Record Switch on Current Track. This means that when you select a MIDI track, only the selected track is record and monitor enabled. Notice when I change tracks, the previous track is no longer enabled for recording. This would be useful if you're only recording one track at a time. Anyway, I think that covers most of the scenarios associated with configuring and troubleshooting MIDI in Samplitude, and I hope these tips have been of use to you. So goodbye for now.